I recently met with a number of families from around our state who desperately want to access treatment that doctors say will help their loved ones, but they are blocked by confusing and outdated federal laws. These New Yorkers are not full-time political lobbyists. They're full-time moms and dads trying to do the right thing and help their children get medicine that can ease their chronic pain. These are families with loved ones whose symptoms and illnesses would be helped by medical marijuana. These families are simply asking Congress to do its job, to take care of America's families. Across the country, state lawmakers have already recognized what medical research is showing us, that cannabis can treat a variety of illnesses, from MS to cancer to epilepsy to seizures. Medical marijuana is legal in 23 states, including New York, once our state program begins next year. It's legal in the District of Columbia, and 12 other states have laws permitting the use of cannabidiol, or CBD. CBD is a strain of medical marijuana that has almost no THC and doesn't cause a high. This is the medicine that so many parents have had prescribed for their children who have seizures, daily seizures, hundreds of seizures in one day. And these seizures actually prevent these children's brains from developing fully, and these children from living the fullest lives they can. Yet the federal laws don't allow any medical use of marijuana, even in states where it's legal. Instead, the federal laws threaten prosecution of the patients, the doctors, and the providers who participate in state medical marijuana programs. These laws severely restrict the scientific research of medical marijuana. And they prevent transparent financing for medical marijuana dispensaries, forcing providers to rely on a dangerous cash-only business. These laws ignore the health benefits of medical marijuana. It's clearly a case of ideology getting in the way of scientific progress. The government should not prevent doctors from prescribing medicine that has been shown to work. And the government should not block families from accessing treatment for their loved ones. Under current law, patients and doctors are forced to either forego necessary care or use alternatives that have often severe side effects. And those who do obtain medical mar marijuana risk arrest from federal authorities, even if they are in compliance with state laws. As the families told me when I visited with them last month, they aren't just afraid of prosecution. They're afraid of a knock on the door from child services coming to take away their children all because they choose to give their children medicine that doctors have prescribed. Senator Cory Booker, Senator Rand Paul, and I have introduced a new bill, the Carers Act, which would recognize that marijuana has accepted medical uses and would recognize the will of lawmakers across 23 states that have decided that denying families access to this medicine is wrong. This bipartisan bill would finally allow patients and families, including veterans in those 23 states, to access medical care without fear of prosecution. It would also reclassify medical marijuana as something, as something called a Schedule II drug instead of a Schedule I drug. This would allow doctors to write prescriptions to patients and would lift bureaucratic restraints so that scientific research could be conducted on the health benefits across the country and by the CDC. We need to modernize our laws. There are too many stories like the ones I heard in New York just a few weeks ago, like Kate and Morgan Hintz. Kate and her four-year-old daughter, Morgan, joined me in Washington yesterday to announce this new bipartisan legislation. Morgan has Dravet syndrome, which is a rare form of epilepsy that has no known cure. Even during the press conference, Morgan had a seizure. Even though there's a growing scientific consensus that medical marijuana actually helps control these seizures, Morgan's mother would have to violate laws and risk arrest just to give her daughter the medicine she desperately needs. Their story is not the only one. I will be urging my colleagues in Congress to support the CARES Act. It gives parents the ability and option to treat these diseases more effectively and to ease their children's pain more thoroughly. 